I want to read a text from Matthew's Gospel, the 20th chapter and the 28th verse. Jesus said, The Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Of all the statements I have read spoken by the Lord Jesus, I think this is the most wonderful, the most beautiful. He came to buy me. He came to redeem me. He came to purchase me. If you look up the word ransom in Chambers' dictionary, it defies ransom simply by saying, price paid for redemption from captivity or punishment. To set free for a price. But I love the Greek New Testament's definition. It says, ransom, the price paid for a slave who is then set free by the one who bought him. <clears throat> Jesus, sir, Jesus, lady, came to buy you. That was the mission of Jesus. That was the all-consuming passion of Jesus, to come to this earth from the highest glory to pay the price for my sins and your sins. What was the price? How much did it cost? Listen to the apostle Peter. In 1 Peter chapter 1, he says, "'You were not redeemed with corruptible things "'such as silver and gold, "'but with the precious blood of Christ "'as of a lamb without blemish and spot.'" When the Lord Jesus walked this scene of time, he was my ransom personified. When he breathed, my ransom breathed. When he healed, my ransom healed. When he spoke, my ransom spoke. When he rose from the dead, my ransom rose. And he stands in the glory tonight as my great high priest pleading for me. Think of it, my ransom is pleading for me. And when he comes again the second time, and ladies and gentlemen, that will be very soon, my ransom is coming for me. And when I look upon his face throughout the countless ages of eternity, I will be looking at my ransom. For millions of years I will live, and I will say, he bought me. As the lady used to sing in Luxembourg, each drop of blood bought me a million years. And each drop of blood, ladies and gentlemen, will buy you a million years. The Greek experts tell me when the Lord Jesus cried on the cross, it is finished. It not only meant his redemptive work was finished, but it also meant something more beautiful. It is finished is actually one word in Greek. It is the word tetelestes, and it simply means paid in full. <clears throat> When Jesus cried, Tetelestes, he said, Ped in full. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know what that means? It means I have been paid in full. There are no extras. I have been purchased totally and completely. I am his, and he is mine. I will never belong to Satan again. Sin will not have dominion over me. There is nothing that Satan has can ever induce my Savior to sell me back again. I am redeemed, and I am his forever. What does God's people say? 
What does God's people say? Yes, thank you. Listen to this marvelous statement spoken by the patriarch Job. Job, under the spirit of prophecy, says in his 33rd chapter, deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. Every one of you were going down to the pit. And Job said, deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. To use simple A terms, God the Father said to Satan, take your hands of Jim McConnell from going down the pit. I, God the Father, have found a ransom for him through my son. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not ashamed to tell you tonight that I'm in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to tell you that he loves me. And it's a wonderful experience to belong to the Son of God. Satan had to back off. Listen to Job again. In chapter 19, he says, For I know that my Redeemer liveth. There's the ransom again. And that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall not behold another. Pastor McConnell, I'm an old drunkard. That's all right, sir. Mm. Pastor, I'm an old prostitute. That's all right, lady. Mm. Pastor, I'm a drug addict. That's all right, son. Pastor, I'm an old church member. Pastor, I'm a nobody. Pastor, I'm a sinner. Sir and lady, boy and girl, Jesus came to buy you. And the price has been paid by the shedding of his blood. His blood, which is the ransom, not only buys you, it also cleanses you, and it also keeps cleansing you every day. My ransom cleanses me every day. And that's the secret of the Christian life. Some of you have fallen, and when you've fallen, you said, I can't go on. But you don't realize that my ransom paid for your past sins, paid for your present sins, and he's paid for your future sins. What a ransom. He's a wonderful Savior tonight. There's some of you listening to me tonight, and you've never heard anything like this before. He's a wonderful Savior. But there's a solemn note to this great theme, and I must be faithful in bringing it to you. Has God, sir, been speaking to you? Has God, lady, been speaking to you? I know he has been speaking long for some of you. Sitting here tonight, he's been speaking long into your heart, and you've rejected him. There's ladies here tonight listening to me, and you can't sleep at night because he's been speaking to you, and he's telling you, I love you. You belong to me, but still you reject him. And every time you reject God's son, you reject God's ransom, the only remedy for sin. There's no other remedy. You can pay penance. You can confess to a priest. You can come and even see me in one of these rooms and tell me your past life. But there's neither priest, neither minister, neither church, neither denomination can help you. The only person who can help you is the ransom. And that ransom is the Lord Jesus Christ. Every time you reject God's Son, you reject God's ransom the only remedy for sin. When you do that, do you realize what you're doing, sir? You're grieving God. When you do that, lady, do you realize what you're doing? You're disappointing God. In fact, some of you learned these truths from your mother's knee, and you know these things. Still, you reject God's remedy and God's ransom. Friend, tonight beware that your stubborn, knowledgeable rejection makes God angry. Let me briefly tell you, and you're listening well to me, what God the Father thinks of his Son. 
See him at 30 years of age beginning his ministry. And he goes to be baptized in the river Jordan. And John sees him and he says, Behold the Lamb of God. There's the ransom again that beareth away the sin of the world. And here John says, I'm not going to baptize you. I need to be baptized of you. And Jesus said, Suffer it to be now so, for it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. And he says to John, Baptize me. And as John baptized him in the water, and Jesus come up out of the water, we are told, the heavens opened unto him, and the Spirit of God descended upon him like a dove. And the Father's voice said, listen, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The Greek New Testament reads it like this. This is my beloved One. Only one righteous. There is none righteous, no, not one, says the book of Romans. But God the Father says, This is my beloved one in whom I am well pleased. See him in his 33rd year as he goes up to the mountain and he takes Peter and James and John with him to pray. And we're told that as he prayed, his face altered and a big, a big came shining as the sun in its strength. And the apostles bowed their head as the glory of God emanated from him. And again the Father's voice descended from heaven. Listen to what he said. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Don't listen to anybody else. It's him you listen to. Don't regard anybody else. It's him that you listen to. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Friend, that's what God thinks of his son. Now I say to every one of you tonight, thousands of you in this odyssey, watch how you treat God's son. Oh, treat men the way you want if you do. But watch how you treat God's Son, His beloved one, the darling of His bosom, the apple of His eye, the one who was with Him in eternity. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And notice what the ransom did. All things were made by Him, and without Him, was not anything made that was made in him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Do you know what? To, to create the world. Do you know all it did? It cost God his breath. To create the world. All it cost God was his breath. He said, let there be. And there was. But to redeem the world. It cost God his blood. <clears throat> It costs God his blood. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. I ask, who was manifest in flesh? Who was seen of angels? Who was preached unto the Gentiles? Who was believed on in the world? Who was received up into glory? His name is Jesus, and he's God's ransom. We're talking about real things tonight. We're talking about things that really matter. The story is told, and I think this is beautiful, and it's a true story. The story is told of a young boy who lived in a town on the Mississippi River. He made a toy sailboat, well designed and suitably painted. And one day, while sailing it on the river, the string broke, and the little ship sailed on down the river clear out of sight. The little boy was upset. Some weeks later, the boy with his mother was in a town lower down the river. And in the window of a pawn shop, he spied of all things his little toy ship. Rushing into the shop, 
he demanded that the owner return to him his boat. Give me my boat. It belongs to me. But he soon learned that he would have to buy or redeem his little vessel. His mother, coming to the rescue, supplied the purchase price. And coming out of the pawn shop, the boy clutching his little ship to his breast was heard to exclaim, you are twice mine. I made you and I bought you. You are twice mine. I made you and I bought you. You are his creation tonight, ladies and gentlemen. He made you. But there are people that he made will go out into eternity without God and without Christ and without hope in the world. You need him to buy you. You need him to buy you, sir. You need him to buy you, lady. You need him to redeem you. You need him tonight. As I bring this little word to a close, and you've listened wonderfully, the word ransom that our Lord uses in our text belongs to a word based on the root, root verb, leo, which means to loose. To loose. Mm. The root word originally meant nothing more to loose or to loosen in taking off one's clothes or on buckling one's armor. But when used of persons, it signifies the loosing of bonds so that, for example, a prisoner might be released. Mm. Mm. I've come to pay your fine. He has paid fine after fine for me. I've come to pay your fine. It was usually necessary to pay a ransom to free a prisoner. And that's what Jesus came to do, and he did, by shedding his blood and pouring out his life on the cross of Calvary. He did this. Sir and lady, can you grasp this tonight? When you go home, I want you to realize he died to buy you. I want you to realize, young man, he died to buy you. You may be here tonight and say, I just came to hear this old fashioned preacher that's down the White Well Road. I, I, I think he's not right in the head. I'm as wise as can be. And if I don't understand many things that's in this world tonight, and I don't, I don't need to understand everything, I understand this, that he came to buy me. And that's the most important thing in the world. <laughs> he died to set you free. His blood was the price that the law demanded. He paid it totally. He paid it completely so that you could be totally and completely free. Because the law demanded. Here's what the law said in Leviticus. It is the blood that maketh atonement for the soul. Not your good works. Not your penance. It is the blood that maketh atonement for the soul. The book of Leviticus again, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sins. And God said, that's the price. And his son came and said, I'll pay it. And do you know what Paul says in Galatians 2 and 20? And I'll quote it, and then I'll give you the Greek meaning of it. He says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And you see that last line, who loved me and gave himself for me? Here's the way it reads in the Greek who loved me and gave himself up for me. In other words, stepped in to the judge and the jury and said, I'll take Jim McConnell's place. I'll take this lady's place. I'll take your place if you'll only trust me. And if you trust him tonight, he not only will become your substitute, he will become your friend. He'll become your savior. He'll become your Lord. 
and he'll become your king. Does, would God's people say amen tonight? Isn't it wonderful to hear the gospel? Mm. The old-fashioned gospel. And you see, that's why Paul said, listen to this, to the Corinthian believers. Listen to this. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God? For ye are not your own, ye are bought with a price. I belong to Jesus Christ. Ye are not your own. Ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. That means I am his completely. I'm like the little boy with his sailing boat. I am both his. He made me and he bought me. Friend, he has made you. Sin has separated you from him tonight. Call out to him tonight. He will find you. If you call out to him, Jesus, he will find you. He knows where you're sitting. Call out. He'll come up to, to, to those stairs. He'll go down to the back rows. Call out to him tonight, and he'll come to you, and he'll save you. I will close now. Notice Peter calls Christ's blood precious. He says you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. See, there are critics who would say, those that preach about the blood, it's a slaughterhouse religion. They don't even realize that the word that they're using, slaughter, is a Bible word. Hi, pastor. I'm told in Isaiah 53, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, but the Lord hath led on him the iniquity of us all. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. Mm. There you have it. Mm. Only blood would satisfy Almighty God. Do you know at the Passover? Josephus, the Jewish historian, writes at the Passover, 260,000 lambs were offered at every Passover. But when Jesus came, every lamb was done away with because John said, Behold, the Lamb of God that beareth away the sin of the world. Isn't he a wonderful Savior? Would God's people say amen? He's a wonderful Savior. And that's what he has done for us tonight. But he says the precious blood of Christ, meaning the supremacy of its value. The blood is God's currency. Whether you like it or not, the blood is God's currency. And did you also notice also in Peter's statement, Peter mentions silver and gold. That's the world's currency. Friend, there wasn't enough silver and gold in the entire universe to buy you. Do you know that? There's not enough gold and silver in the entire universe to buy you. A pastor, listen to Jesus. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, listen to him. What shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for a soul? Christ is saying the entire universe with all its valuables couldn't buy you. Only one person could buy you, the ransom, the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, do you know inside you, ladies and gentlemen, is the most richest thing in the universe, your personal soul? your personal soul. If you lose that, and if you give it to Satan, you're lost forever. He came to buy it. The worth of a single soul overmatches silver and gold. Only the blood of God's Son could redeem or buy back our soul from the part of sin and Satan. As soon as a man and a woman realizes their need of God's Son and cries, wash me, cleanse me in the blood of the Lamb, that person is released 
That person is set free. And there's thousands in this odyssey who can testify to that tonight. And if you're saved tonight, will you shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. We can testify to that tonight. I remember many years ago, as many of you know, I was an orphan. And I went through various stages in life. I'll tell you this story. It's not a sob story. But I'll tell you this story to uh, illuminate my thought. And I came to the Lord in the little iron mission hall on the Templemore Avenue, just down the road. I came to him as a boy. And I remember being on my own, and this old voice used to say to me, you only think you're saved. You only think you're saved, but you're not. This is pie in the sky. This is ridiculous. Don't forget I had no parents. Don't forget I was on my own. And boy, I was vulnerable, and the devil was busy, and he was troubling me. And a Christian brother saw me, and he came over to me, this child of God, and he says, Sonny, all right. And I says, there's a voice that says to me nearly every day, Jim McConnell You only think you're saved, but you're not saved. He says, listen, son, the next time the devil comes to you, give him your testimony. I says, do you mean that? He says, yes. The next time the devil comes to you, you give him your testimony. Well, a few days passed, nothing happened. I felt great. But then, a few weeks later, the old enemy came and he says, ah, you only think you're saved. And do you know what I did? I'm standing in 14 Spring Street in a little kitchen house, nobody in the house, and I says, Satan, I want to tell you that I gave my heart to the Lord Jesus on a Sunday afternoon, and Sammy Jamison read the scriptures to me, and he pointed me to Jesus Christ, and I love him with all my heart. He came back again, and I give him my testimony again. He came back again, and I give him my testimony again. In fact, the devil has heard my testimony more than anybody. (laughs) He never comes back because he knows my testimony. I have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's a wonderful verse in Revelation chapter 12 that I discovered when I was a boy. It talks about God's people being martyred and persecuted. And this is what it says in Revelation chapter 12. And they overcame him, that is the devil, with the word of their testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. Here you have the testimony and the ransom. I know God's speaking here tonight. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for listening. I know God is speaking. Will you let God move upon your heart? And will you, for the first time in your life, say, I'm going to make a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, don't go out of here the same person that came in. Go out changed. Go out ransomed. Go out ransomed. Go out healed. Go out restored. Go out forgiven. That's what he came to do. May God bless you. And everybody said.